I, I just like the fact that his name was Clyde. Uh, Clyde is last year as a junior for North Kansas City. Uh, he had over 2,500 yards rushing, 27 rushing touchdowns, and over 100 tackles. He goes about 6'1", about 215, is the strongest kid in a program that has been built on Leon Douglas, the head coach there, is a friend of Coach Hoover and I as we work with him and through Epic 7. And they've really built a, a, an emphasis on powerlifting. When he got there, they didn't have a powerlifting program. And I think this year he had 15 kids win state in powerlifting. And one of those kids that's really grown through that is CJ. And CJ, like I say, he goes about 6'1", about 215, extremely fast, very physical football player. I think he's a linebacker on the next level. Right now, he's the front runner for the Player of the Year award in Kansas City. There's yeah. no, He's averaging over 280 rushing yards a game. I believe he's had four games. He's had two games this year, I think, where he was over 400. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's the, the career, the, the best season in the state of Missouri, rushing-wise, was there was a guy that I think he averaged 275. And at last look, CJ is averaging, I think, 280, almost 281. Wow. And they're, you know, everybody coming into the season, people pointed to Graham Mertz, the, the Wisconsin yeah. commit quarterback yeah. from Blue Valley North, and said, that's the guy to win the Simone. And the thing is, is he was probably the best chance that a kid from Kansas was going to have yeah. in a while. And Graham has been hurt. Blue Valley North has struggled. And now he's finally back and looking healthy. And it's easy for a quarterback to rally. He can get mm-hmm. back in that race pretty quickly. But I think if, you, if you're talking about the kid who should be the best player in the city, Clyde plays both ways and may be the best offensive player and the best defensive player in the city. Wow. I mean, I, I know that North Kansas City has, has had a good year. You know, they I mean, are 5-0 and oh right now. Yeah. Um, you know, I obviously met Coach Douglas this summer, uh, mm-hmm. you know, working that camp um, with you. And, uh, you know, good guy, um, does, it, does it the right way. Well, and he's got a kid. He has a defensive lineman that is uh, committed to Northwestern. That ended up, I think, with a number of SEC defensive line offers. Uh, he has a very long Nigerian name. I think his first name is Atomwe, oh, and wow. they just call him Tommy. And <laughs> yeah, Tommy is extremely intelligent, and he got an offer from Northwestern. And Leon told me about it. They went up there and visited. And Northwestern just built a new indoor that the the corner of it hangs out over the lake. There oh. at, at the side of Chicago. That's pretty sweet. And it's this, yeah, Pat Fitzgerald's built an unbelievable program up there. I mean, he's he obviously was a tremendous player for them and has really elevated the profile of it. And Tommy wants to be a doctor. He can go to school, play football in Chicago, go to Northwestern Medical School. And Leon was like, yeah, that, that was a done deal before we yeah, got there. Yeah. yeah. But they've got two SEC caliber athletes and several other really good football players on the team. I, I like a lot of what I've seen from North Kansas City. On the Kansas side, you know, um, Bryson Cobbins, before he got nicked up, is a kid who just is a junior. I mean, he went up to Nebraska's camp this summer, was the fastest kid in the camp. Um, The only knock on Bryson is his height. He's a Mm -hmm. little bit short, but extremely explosive, very physical. Um, You know, I I really like – Graham's going to be a tremendous football player at Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's graduating in December. He'll be on campus in January. He will compete for the starting job from the very first day. And what will be interesting is his his best receiver will be A.J. Taylor. That mm-hmm. played at Rockhurst and chose Wisconsin out of high school, who will be, I think this will probably end up being his last year up there. But there are a couple local kids in the fact that he's up there. And there is a, uh, a big defensive lineman who played at an eight-man program in Kansas, little in Horton. Horton, Kansas. West Elk High School. Wow. Eight-man. He is Isaiah Loudermilk. He's one of their starting defensive ends. He goes about six foot six, almost six foot seven. Uh, he was as a senior. He was six six, two eighty five. He played. It was eight man, so he was a defensive end on defense. On offense, he played tackle, which is a three man offensive line. He would line up as a tight end. On third down plays, they would line him up as a split end and throw him the ball, and he could get to the first down marker. He could typically he'd get average 12 to 15 yards per reception because nobody could get to him and pull him down. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and they've now bulked him up. He is about 295. I think I saw him maybe listed 303 last time they were on TV. Wow. Just And he looks like a kid that Wisconsin gets. Yeah. yeah. 
it was I remember covering his recruitment and I asked him I said Isaiah I said you're the literal I, I in an article I called him the next big thing in Kansas and I was like you're literally the biggest kid in your town aren't you and he goes I'm the biggest person in my town yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I'm I'm sure uh, you know we've we've talked a little bit about Graham you know on the show and just because I coached against him last year in uh-huh. the quarterfinal game uh, he he is probably. I mean, well, I don't even have to say probably. He's the best high school quarterback that I have seen during my coaching career. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, either against or that was on one of my teams. He and and I agree with you completely. I think he'll compete for that starting job. And I mean, the good thing, even if he does play young, Wisconsin's really still going to be a run heavy team, mm-hmm. and so that's going to help him kind of bring him along. That the throws that they're going to ask him to make early aren't necessarily going to be as tight of a window. Right. I mean, not that he couldn't, but – and, and I mean, you know, obviously this summer, you know, right before uh, the season, you know, was really gearing up, he tweeted out that he was going to shut his recruitment down and just keep with his commitment. And, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I thought that was a, a great thing for him so he could just focus on his senior season. And, I mean, I, I hated to see him kind of get nicked up, but well, – You know, he's – he was an interesting kid in that, you know, he's the first kid since, first kid from Kansas since Blake Bell to make it to the Elite 11 Finals, the the high-level quarterback camp that, mm-hmm. that Coach Hoover actually has worked for a number of years with Trent Dilfer. Um, first kid since Bell, who obviously went on to be the belldozer at OU and become basically a, a, a single-wing quarterback for yeah. all intents and purposes, and now a tight end. Um he was the best chance I think we've had for a guy to go and do well, and he did. He showed very well up there mm-hmm. and on, at the highest level. And I think Graham is Graham is blessed with arm talent that I have never seen on a high school quarterback in this area. And I've 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 been very lucky. I've been able to watch you know Ryan Willis, who had a tremendous game. Obviously, he's had a great two weeks at Virginia Tech the last couple mm-hmm. of weeks. Yeah, uh, Skylar Thompson, who that's the thing I, I've said, and also I don't, you know, I don't want to cut you off here, but you, this is one of the things I made the point that I don't know if we're ever going to see a group of high school quarterbacks in Kansas City again, like we saw when Skylar Thompson was at Fort Osage, Drew Locke was at Lee Summit, yeah, and Ryan say. Willis was at Miage. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was three pretty good dudes. All the, yeah, all around the same time too. It's crazy, man. Drew, yeah, I and I'm a Mizzou fan, so I'm a, I'm a big Drew Lock guy. So I, you know, Chiefs don't need him, so he can go wherever. But well, and, and tell you know, as a Mizzou fan, I mean, when you look last year, obviously set had one of the greatest seasons of any quarterback in SEC history. Right. I mean, how how ex- where are you right now as a Missouri fan? Like I, it's obviously the the loss to Georgia was tough. Yes. And that's a game I felt like we maybe could have even won. That we made some mistakes early in the game, uh-huh. and it just let it get away from us. And then you also got to see. Uh, it was also one of those games where you watch and you say, "Georgia, Georgia is more talented. Mm-hmm. Like they're just more talented. They just are." But they made they made the mistake. Was the uh, was a punt return, and then also a fumble. Was that right? Or was it, uh, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think they had a fumble there early. Was a fumble. Yeah. Yeah, and so I don't know. It's been cool to watch Drew do get go from getting kind of forced into starting from from Matty Mock. Uh, you know, messing up. Oh, Matty. We don't have to go into that too much. <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> but, everybody everybody knows about that. Story. But he came in, and it's been really cool to see him grow mm-hmm. and turn into the court to the elite quarterback that we see right now. Um, and he is that. That is exactly is really what he is. Yeah. I mean, the the thing is, and talking to you know just guys I coach with here, that we we kind of took away from that game is his receivers couldn't get the separation from the Georgia cornerbacks, the Georgia secondary that they can get from some other guys, just because they're not a you know those Georgia they, corners have a little more speed. Those are some dudes back. Yeah. There. So <laughs> yeah. when when that you know, might be for future. You know, yeah. higher draft picks starting in that secondary that you're looking at across. Yeah, that. I mean, That's, so obviously that makes your day as a quarterback that much tougher when your receivers can't get that separation because the the margin of error on your throw is greatly decreased. You know, you can't miss it by just a foot or just an inch or, you know, because they're all over your guys. So, 
I mean, that made it tougher, too, on him. Yeah, I think he'll, he'll have a bounce back week this week. South Carolina, uh, I think they'll bounce back against them. But SEC's tough. I mean, it's tough for Mizzou to get to that nine or to that ten win. I mean, it's tough. You can get yeah. to you know six or seven, but it's SEC's really really tough. And uh, you know, with, with Odom, he's done all right, but uh, uh, we can talk about that later. But, I was yeah. going to say there, there's a lot of there's a lot of indecision, and you're like a lot of the Missouri fans that I talk with. It's kind of like, uh, well, we'll see. You know, I really liked, because I really liked Pinkle, and I wasn't really sure the direction they were going to go in after he stepped down because of health reasons. Mm-hmm. And they decided to just kind of stick with their guy, a guy that was already in the program. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't know if that was the best decision or not. Uh, I mean, so far it's been okay, but I don't know. Especially when you have a quarterback like Locke. I don't know. A I once in a generation quarterback. But I would say yeah. I don't know who else. Like at that at the moment that happened, I don't know who else they go for as far as coaching goes. I don't know. I mean, uh, it's a good point. I, yeah. I'm not sure. So it yeah. just depends. Um, Timing is a big part of that. So I mean, well, I know it's not just who's out there too. It's 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 about who can you get. Yeah. And because yeah. just because a name is out there doesn't mean you know. They may they may not want to be in the SEC and have to bang heads with those programs. They may not they may not want to come to this part of the country. Right. I mean, Jimmy Johnson. They're still trying to get him to come off the boat in Florida, and Lord knows he's not coming. You know, he's no. like a lot of people. I don't. <laughs> I'm not dealing with cold weather. I want to play golf. And, yeah. You know, Spurrier was the same way, and it's yeah. I think it's it's an interesting time in the coaching community too right now because you're seeing so much turnover so much change everybody talks about how you know assistant coaches are basically mercenaries in a yeah. lot of ways and there's even more movement now than there ever has been and with the almost kind of free agency that we've seen instilled in the NCA with guys being able to yeah, transfer being able more transfer, readily yeah yeah it's really it really is interesting too i mean i've even seen not a lot, not the majority, but I've seen a lot of the, even Nebraska. I'm a big Scott Frost guy, and I've seen a lot of Nebraska fan, fans. Uh, What's this guy doing? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dang, you're going to give him four games? And that's you your boy. You're giving him four games? Yeah. This I mean, is the yeah, guy. he's a Nebraska legend. That is your favorite son, and you're going to question. I mean, they're turning on him hard. They are. The, pro- the problem is, is, like, before the season started, I have, I have, you know them. I have friends that are Nebraska fans. They're mm-hmm. probably the worst. Sorry, they're, they're, I, I they're think the, the Nebraska fans are. They're the bad. worst. They're the, they're the worst people to watch a game with because they don't. It's like they don't. It's like the, it's like they're, they're like the guys that when uh, you run like an ISO play or you run like a like a zone like a little zone run and you get three or four yards. Why are you running the ball up the middle? They you know all, yeah. they, want, all they want to see is like the twenty yard. You know you know the guys. I'm yeah, talking about. I do. And I'm like, those are the same guys that they hated Pioli, or they hated uh, uh, Bo Pelini. Bo Pelini. They hated Pelini. Hated Pioli, too. And <laughs> yeah, they did. They, <laughs> yeah, they hated <laughs> Pioli. But, like, they hate, you know, it's just like, they, it's like they hate everybody. And then, like, the Frost comes in there, and I'm talking to him before the season, and they swear this. I'm like, how many, how many wins do you guys think you're going to get? The four-win program last year, right? Four wins. Yes. How many wins do you think you're going to get? I want them to tell me ten. We're going to win ten games this year. I'm like, you remember you're in the Big Ten. You're in the big yeah, ten. I mean, I didn't see them getting that many, but I, I am surprised I they six. haven't won a game. I liked. I am surprised. Too. I thought they'd be a bowl team. I, know. I liked six wins for them, yeah. but I, I wouldn't give up on. I love Scott. Frost. No, I, I think you you've got to give him some time, and I and I have no doubt that he can he can get them turned around. But I mean, you got to give him a couple years of recruiting to be able to get some of his players in there. It's funny. Some of his press conferences, he's he's kind of like alluding to he needs to get rid of some guys that aren't on board with the program. Yeah. So I'm like wondering if it's just the and that I mean that always happens when you have a coaching change. Oh yeah. You know you've got guys that are they still believe in the guy that recruited them and the old guy. You know he's my guy. I don't know this guy and and they're always hesitant to buy in. I mean I've even seen it in high school football. You know when when change happens. You know, you get certain guys that are just like, well, I don't know about this new guy. Well, but, think about right. it, you know, professionally. Anytime you're in a workplace and suddenly the, the boss changes, yeah. it's the same idea. There are people, well, well, wait a minute. I liked the way things were. I, I liked doing things that I was comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. It always reminds me of the guy from Office Space, you know. I yeah. was told that I could listen to the radio at a reasonable volume. Yeah, you know, it's just it's somebody. This is the way we've always done it, and I don't want to change that. And I think that it's there's some human nature in that, and Mm -hmm. you know, it's 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 funny because sometimes people want to they want to chastise college kids for being the way that many of them are in their professional lives. Yeah, exactly. When their supervisor changes, Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you know, we 
I, I felt like here, um, you know, obviously the change that happened from Fred to, to Hoover, uh, you